And they're racing, and Awam just threw its head up, and Thanksgiving slow to go when the starter said go. So let's see how they play this. Twist or fade, Capiero is near the rail. Zilzald is on the outside of runners, and Awam is back in that fourth position. Charles is on the inside, then Atayeb, and Thanksgiving's the trailer. It's racing about eight lengths off the leaders as Twistle Faye takes them in behind the drool and leads it. Zilzal is back in second position and Capiera is third. Awam is on the outside of runners in the blue and its pace is not good. Further back in the runners, Charles. Atayab is on the outside and then Thanksgiving. So let's see how all this tactics work and it's Twist of Fate in the Daily News. Zilzal's now challenging for that position. Awam is on the outside of Capiera. Atayab and Charles and Thanksgiving's in the back seat about seven lengths off the leader and Zilzal saying the pace is too slow. Goes on to lead it. Twist of Fate and Awam, they travel together. Capiera, Atayev, and then comes Charles, and out the back is Thanksgiving. They move towards the 800 meter marker, Zilzal, and Awam has now moved up a half length second. Twist of Fate on a loose rein is third. Atayev's on the move. Capiera, Thanksgiving, and then Charles. Homeward down in the Daily News, Zilzal. Now Hawam's getting a flick down the neck to challenge Zilzal for that lead. And Twist of Fate's only a half length back. Then comes a tie-up and behind that Capiera. Now Hawam gets the shake up and comes into the lead. Twist of Fate comes towards the outside to make a race of it. It's a Wam by a length and a quarter. Twist of Fate is trying to wear it down over the last hundred. A Wam still being kept together. Twist of Fate is trying to make a race of it, but a Wam's going on. And a Wam will win it. Twist of Fate will get second. Capiera third. Zulzo fourth. Then Thanksgiving Charles and a tie -up. So Hawam wins it, the Silvano, Anton Marcus, Mike de Kock, Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum, read by Volgebush Drift and Maritz Fontaine, that's win number six from seven. Wins a length and a quarter, just got a few, few flicks down the neck to win a length and a half or length and a quarter, twist of fate, certainly not disgraced in second. Then it's about five or six lengths to Capiera, further back is Zilzal, and further back Thanksgiving, and then they were followed by Charles, further back in the run of the Daily News 2000. We'll take a look at that head on. So those blue silks slightly head twisted, a flick down the neck, and a warm comes to tackle. Twist of fate is trying to make a race of it. And you'll see how he starts to still drift towards the inside. Anton's just flicking him down the neck. He's just gliding both ways to see if there's any dangers inside. And a warm comes home to win the Daily News 2000. Now, here's a couple of questions I'd like to ask. So I'm going to ask whoever's presenting D's or Sheldon and Mike DeCock, if you're listening to me, please answer this question. There's been write-ups that this is the best horse produced in South Africa. Is he there yet? Is he going to get there yet? Is he as good as the horse chestnut? Please answer that for us. And Dees, if you interview Anton, please put the same question to him because he's ridden horses like Empress Club, Variety Club, and Legal Eagle. And I certainly know that Anton doesn't like to compare decades and decades previously gone. So please ask those questions and let's see where we stand with our Huam and obviously will he go for the Vodacom. Back to the studio. Well the star attraction for the main event has arrived and introduced himself to the racing public in KZN. The ruling Vodacom Durban July favorite has not stopped the Group 1 Daily News 2000. And the man that's going to tell us a bit more about this victory is none other than uh, his pilot, who is Anton Marcus. And Anton has got to know this horse now, winning his last start, which was the Primus Champions Challenge, where he did it in fine style. How was that win today? Geez, you know, you've got to be impressed with him. It's, uh, you know, people look at the form and you think it's an absolute gimme. It's never a gimme when you're taking on a horse like Twister Fate. Uh, you know, as you see in the book, he's only rated four pounds inferior. Mm -hmm. And I've won on him, you know, so I thought it was a win full of merit. 
And uh, I think a couple of months down the line, honestly, the world could be the sources are always ready. At the top of the straight, you decided I'm going to make your move. That was the right time? Yes, I wanted to, you know. Um, it's come out of racing at Turfentine. It's deceptive because it's quite a long straight, you know, but despite that, they still get going relatively early on him, you know. And the pace was, it was just ordinary. Um, so I thought I wasn't going to hang around. I'm on the best hosties. I stayed back to actually watch the head-on because, you know, side-on can be a bit deceiving. You punched him out of the hands. I did, yes. He's, you know, he had a, a tendency to run to the inside a bit. So I just wanted to try to keep the stick off him and just keep him as balanced as possible. Well done, Anton. We'll join you shortly for the winning presentation. Uh, fantastic association that you're building up with the source. Yes, yes. I mean, I've got to thank Mike and Matt, Diane, shake hand Dan. Thank you, um, Angus Gold. And uh, yeah, and also just great to be able to ride in for, for team regiment as well. Nice one. Thank you. Lovely. Let's get uh, Mike de Kock in. Of course, he is the winning trainer. And uh, firstly, I think we have to thank Mike uh, for bringing the source down to our province and introducing him to KZN because uh, he could have had any plan with the source, whatever he chose to do, but he decided I'm going to come down. It's a small field. Mike, uh, the last time we chatted, uh, you know, briefly about Socrat when he made his debut here, uh, this race was a small field and it looked the right type of field for him, you know, to just keep him on a winning trail. Yeah, it's the right race, Dees. You know, at the end of the day, um, it's all good and well, everybody booming a horse up, but you've got to beat the best. And in my opinion today, certainly over this trip, he, he beat what I think is probably the second best three-year-old around um, in, in, in Joey's horse. I thought up until now, he hadn't really, really been tested. I thought this was the kind of race that was going to test him. And, and Joey's horse being in the fine form that he's been in, he's run second, third in all the top races. He won the guineas. Um, he was going to test him today, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad he came through it. And I'm, and I'm glad the race worked out like it did, that he, had a, he actually had to dig down deep. I didn't get the chance to chat to you off air about his travels and how he settled in here to KZN, but uh, things go according to plan? Yeah, sure. I mean, he's, he's, um, you know, he's a very strong-minded horse and um, you know, pretty straightforward when it comes to traveling, eating, and all that kind of thing. He just gets on with it. But, you know, he, there, there are temperament issues. Um, and not, you know, you, today you see he had to you know, leave the parade ring early. He loaded late. And then... I mean, he goes and almost stands in the gates. He throws his head up. It's not, it wasn't the plan. I mean, the plan was actually to lead today. So, um, uh, you know, the fact that nothing went well and he still came through is important. Um, you know, it's the second time things haven't gone well for him and he still won. So, uh, you know, he's got a lot of guts and heart, this horse. I'm not one to compare horses with any trainer or any jockey, but I'm taking a cue from Craig Peters. After they crossed the line, the one question that he, he wanted uh, me to ask is, I'm going to phrase it a bit dis differently, Mike. In, in the hierarchy of horses that you've trained over the years, where does he fit in you know, amongst the best that you've trained? Look, I mean, of the ones in recent memory, you know, I'm gonna, I've always said that not since Verse and Gedrix have I had a proper horse. And this is a proper horse. And I think he's in that sort of uh, uh, league, you know, with Verse and Gedrix. Uh, you know, maybe even a variety club, but he's got to do a whole lot more before we, one uh, talks about him in the same breath as those horses. But he's going the same route, um, you know, as, as those type of horses. We have to talk about the owner who's been a, a massive, massive investor in South African horse racing. We talk about it every time I speak to you, and another good horse has found him. Shake Amdem's a superhuman. You know, he's a super owner. Uh, his support is unwailing. Um, you know, I'm sure his patience must be uh, must be being tested now with the, with, the, with the export protocols out of South Africa, um, because that was one of his big things was to produce horses here and get them out to Dubai and race abroad. But he's unwavering. He comes to the yearling sales. He spends a lot of money. He's been a massive asset to South African racing. That's for sure. And, um, and if if people actually took the time to sit down and work it out, you would you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fantastic dealing with him. And, and Angus Gold is a great fan of South Africa, too. Loves coming down here. Um, we're very lucky to have this caliber of owner. Every owner is important, to be honest, Dees. But, sure. you know, I mean, uh, Sheikh Hamdam is, uh, is probably the biggest in the world. And uh, it's a privilege to have him here and to train for him. Now, the next question I have to, Mike. Uh, when it comes to supporters around the country, have a look at them. Arguably the most passionate in South Africa is the boys from Durban. Now, this horse is the ruling Bodacom Durban July favorite. It happens in a month's time. Your immediate thoughts uh, on racing him? Um, to be honest with you, these, I've 
I've always maintained uh, I'm absolutely very happy to run the horse into the July. It's going to be a decision that, that uh, Sheikh Hamdan will be involved in. He likes to be involved in that kind of thing in Angus Gold. But to be honest with you, if it's up to me, this horse runs. Um, I was never, there was never any doubt that he wouldn't, in my opinion. But uh, again, I must emphasize the fact that, that the decision will be made by Sheikh Hamdan and, and Angus. And, um, and as soon as I get the green light from them, certainly the public will be told. But I mean, they will be encouraged by me to run. South Africa's up, I mean, the, uh, the July's our premier race. Um, it's the one everyone wants to win. I don't, you know, if he, if he didn't win it, it wouldn't take a lot of shine away from him, in my opinion. Uh, and it would be fantastic to see him with an, with an, with an older sibling in the race. I don't know how too sure, often. They're probably sure. first and second favourite, yep. which is quite amazing. So uh, it would be a great spectacle and something I would, I would hope can happen. Thanks for your time, Mike. And you can smile now. He's got Thank the you. first hurdle done. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thanks. Lovely. Mike de Kock will join you shortly for the winning presentation of the 2019 Daily News 2000.